Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how can I estimate real numbers on a number line? So to estimate a real number on a number line, we need to figure out what integers the real number is close to by converting it to a decimal. So that's gonna be the first thing we do, convert the number to a decimal. And then we will need to be careful with our rounding and negative numbers. So let's do a few examples. We are going to round to the nearest hundredths. So that's two decimal places out and we will place those numbers on the number lines. So the first one is negative square root of 122. So when I type that into the calculator, I get negative 11.045. I'm gonna write three digits out since I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. So the nearest hundredth is four. And after the four, I have a five, so I'm gonna to have to round the four up. So the square root, the negative square root of 122 rounded to the nearest hundredth will be negative 11.05. Okay, so now I need to put this on my number line. So let's think about what two numbers negative 11.5 is in between. Negative 12 would be right below that and negative 11 would be right above it. Remember, negative numbers are backwards of what you would think. So negative 11.5, that is rarely close to negative 11, so that's what I'm gonna put in the middle, negative 11, negative 12 is right below that, and then negative 13 is right below that, and then we have negative 10 and negative nine right above. And negative 11.05, like we said, is between negative 12 and negative 11. It's gonna be a little bit closer to negative 11, or a lot closer. So it would go right there, and I'm gonna put the number in its original form on the number line, right here. The negative square root of 122. Okay, let's look at number two. I have the square root of 92.5, and I get 9.617, if I'm just writing out the first three place values, and I'm rounding to I'm rounding that one, that is in the hundreds place, and I have a seven after it, so I'm gonna have to round the one up. So that will become 9.62. And now I just need to place this on my number line, that is in between nine and 10. It's a little bit closer to 10, so I'm gonna put 10 in the middle of my number line. Right below 10, we'll have nine and eight, and right above 10, we'll have 11 and 12. So. 9.62, that's gonna be between nine and 10, a little bit closer to 10, and that original number was the square root of 92.5. Okay, let's look at number three, square root of 56.2. I get 7.496 when I'm just writing out the first three digits. And I am rounding the nine, that is in the hundreds place. So I'm gonna have to go up there. Well, when I bring the nine up, I don't have any more room to go. So I'm gonna have to bring the four up in order to round this. The next hundredth up from 7.49 would be 7.50. Okay, so 7.5, that is halfway between seven and eight. So I'm just gonna put seven in the middle of my number line here. I have six and five right below it and eight and nine right above it. And 7.5 is halfway between seven and eight. And then it was the square root of 56.2. Okay, let's look at negative eight ninths. So I'm just gonna type negative eight divided by nine and the calculator tells me it is negative 8.8 repeating, or if we wanna write out the first three place values, it'd be 888. So I have an eight with the eight behind it, that means I'm gonna to have to round it up. So negative eight ninths rounds to negative 0.89. So negative 0.89, that is in between negative one and zero. So I'm gonna put zero in the middle of my number line and then I have negative one and negative two right below it and one and two right above it. And then negative 0.89, it's in between negative one and zero. It's going to be closer to one though. So maybe about right there. And that was negative eight ninths. 
Okay, number five, I have negative 13 and 1 eleventh. So mixed numbers are a little bit weird in Desmos. I'm gonna type negative 13, I'm gonna arrow out, and then I'm gonna put my fraction 1 eleventh. So the Desmos calculator is not going to tell us the um, decimal right here. It just tells us the improper fraction. But what I can do is make a new line and now I can do negative 144 divided by 11. So I can take the improper fraction and convert it to a decimal. And I get negative 13.090, which rounded to the nearest hundredth would be negative 13. 0 0.09. So that is what I need to put on the number line. That is in between negative 14 and negative 13. So I'm going to put negative 13 in the middle of the number line. Negative 14 and negative 15 are right below it and negative 12 and negative 11 are right above it. So negative 13.09 is closer to negative 13. And the original form of the number was negative 13 and 1 eleventh. All right, number six, I have negative 4 pi. So I'm going to do negative 4 times 3.14. And I get negative 12.56, which is already rounded to the nearest hundredth for me. That is in between negative 13 and negative 12. So I'm going to put negative 13 in the middle of my number line since it's a little closer to that. Below negative 13 is negative 14 and negative 15 and then above negative 13 is negative 12 and negative 11. Okay, so negative 12.56 is in between negative 13 and negative 12. I'm going to put it a little bit closer to the negative 13 and that was negative 4 pi that we approximated. Okay, square root of 2 divided by 9. I'm going to set up the fraction template, and then I'm going to do square root of 2 over 9. Make sure that 9 is not in the square root sign. It is just the 2 that is underneath it. Okay, and I get 0 0.157 for the first three place values. So that 5 has a 7 behind it, so we're going to have to round the 5 up. So I will get 0 0.16. And 0 0.16 is in between 0 and 1. So I'm just going to put 0 in the middle of this number line. 1 and 2 above it, negative 1 and negative 2 below it. So 0 0.16 is closer to 0. And that original number was square root of 2 over 9. Okay, 67.5, there's a couple of different ways to do decimals. Remember, you can just move it back twice whenever we have a percent and we need to convert it to a decimal. So I would get 0.675. You can confirm by dividing the percent by 100. Remember, percents are out of 100. So 67.5 divided by 100, yep, we get the 0.675. Okay, I have a 7 with a 5 behind it, so that 7 is going to have to round up. So we're going to get 0.68. So 0.68 is between 0 and 1, so I'm going to put 0 in the middle of my number line. 1 and 2 above it, negative 1 and negative 2 below it. 0.68 is a little bit closer to 1 than it is to 0, and that original number was 67.5%. Okay, and number 9, I have negative 4.7 repeating. So negative 4.7 repeating, if I wrote out the first three digits, it would be negative 4.777. So our 7 with the 7 behind it would round up to negative 4.78. And that is in between negative 5 and negative 4. So I'm going to put negative 5 in the middle of my number line, negative 6 and negative 7 right below it, negative 4 and negative 3 right above it. So negative 4.78, that's going to be closer to negative 5 about right here, and that was negative 4.7 repeating in its original form. 